Second section of the fellow craft lecture. Question. Have you ever worked as a fellow craft? Answer. I have, in speculative. But our forefathers wrought in both speculative and operative masonry. Question. Where did they work? Answer. At the building of King Solomon's temple, and of many other Masonic edifices. Question. How long did they work? Answer. Six days. Question. Did they work on the seventh? Answer. They did not. Question. Why so? Answer. Because in six days God created the heavens and the earth, and rested on the seventh day. The seventh day, therefore, our ancient brethren consecrated as a day of rest from their labors, thereby enjoying more frequent opportunities to contemplate the glorious works of creation, and adore their great creator. Question. Did you ever return to the Sanctum Sanctorum, or Holy of Holies, or King Solomon's Temple? Answer. I did. Question. By what way? Answer. Through a long porch or alley. Question. Did anything in particular strike your attention on your return? Answer. There did, viz. Two large columns, or pillars, one on the left hand, and the other on the right. Question. What was the name of the one on the left hand? Answer. Bows, which denotes strength. Question. What was the name of the one on the right hand? Answer. Jashin, denoting establishment. Question. What do they collectively allude to? Answer. A passage in scripture, wherein God has declared in his word, in strength shall this house be established. Question. What were their dimensions? Answer. 35 cubits in height, 12 in circumference, and 4 in diameter. Question. Were they adorned with anything? Answer. They were. With two large chapters, one on each. Question. What was the height of these chapters? Answer. Five cubits. Question. Were they adorned with anything? Answer. They were. With wreaths of network, lily work, and pomegranates. Question. What do they denote? Answer. Unity, peace, and plenty. Question. Why so? Answer. Network, from its connection, denotes union. Lily work, from its wideness and purity, denotes peace. And pomegranates, from the exuberance of their seed, denote plenty. Question. Were those columns adorned with anything further? Answer. They were, viz. With two large globes or balls, one on each. Question. What was the entire height of these pillars? Answer. Forty cubits. Question. Did they contain anything? Answer. They did, viz. All the maps and charts of the celestial and terrestrial bodies. Question. Why are they said to be so extensive? Answer. To denote the universality of masonry, and that a mason's why ought to be equally extensive. Question. What was their composition? Answer. Molten or cast brass. Question. Who cast them? Answer. Our Grand Master, Hiram Abith. Question. Where were they cast? Answer. On the banks of the River Jordan, in the clay ground between Sukkoth and Zeruthah, where King Solomon ordered these and all other holy vessels to be cast. Question. Were they cast solid or hollow? Answer. Hollow. Question. What was their thickness? Answer. Four inches, or a hand's breadth. Question. Why were they cast hollow? Answer. The better to withstand inundations or conflagrations. They were said to contain all the archives of masonry. Question. What did you next come to? Answer. A long, winding staircase, or flight of winding stairs, consisting of three, five, and seven steps. Question. To what do the three steps allude? Answer. The three principal supports in masonry, namely, wisdom, strength, and beauty. They also allude to the three stages in human life, youth, manhood, and age. They further allude to the three degrees in masonry, enter the apprentice, fellow craft, and master mason. Question. What do the five steps allude to? Answer. The five orders in architecture, and the five human sensed. Question. What are the five orders in architecture? Answer. 
the Tuscan, Doric, Ionic, Corinthian, and Composite. Question. What are the five human senses? Answer. Hearing, seeing, feeling, smelling, and tasting. The first three of which have ever been deemed highly essential among Masons, hearing, to hear the word, seeing, to see the sign, and feeling, to feel the grip, whereby one Mason may know another in the dark as well as in the light. Question. What do the seven steps allude to? Answer. The seven sabbatical years, seven years of famine, seven years of war, seven years in building the temple, seven golden candlesticks, seven wonders of the world, seven planets. But, more especially, the seven liberal arts and sciences, which are grammar, rhetoric, logic, arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy. For these and many other reasons the number seven has ever been held in high estimation among Masons. Question. What did you next come to? Answer. The outer door of the middle chamber of King Solomon's temple, which I found partly open, but closely dialed by the junior warden in the south. Question. How did you gain admission? Answer. By the pass, and token of the pass of a fellow craft. Question. What was the name of the pass? Answer. Shibboleth. Question. What does it denote? Answer. Plenty. Question. How is it represented? Answer. By ears of corn hanging near a water ford. Question. Why originated this word as a pass? Answer. In consequence of a quarrel which had long existed between Jephthah, judge of Israel, and the Ephraimites, etc. Question. What did you next discover? Answer. The inner door of the middle chamber of King Solomon's temple. Question. How did you gain admission? Answer. By the grip and word of a fellow craft Jashin. Question. How did the senior warden dispose of you? Answer. He ordered me to be conducted to the worshipful master in the east, who informed me that I had arrived at a place representing the middle chamber of King Solomon's temple, where I would be received and recorded as such which record was then made by the secretary, by the orders of the worshipful master, and I was presented with the wages of a fellow craft, and also the jewels of a fellow craft. Question. What are the wages of a fellow craft? Answer. The corn of nourishment, the wine of refreshment, and the oil of joy. Question. What do they denote? Answer. Peace, harmony, and strength. Question. What are the jewels of a fellow craft? Answer. An attentive ear, an instructive tongue, and a faithful breast. Question. How explained? Answer. The attentive ear receives the sound from the instructive tongue, and the mysteries of masonry are lodged in the repository of a faithful breast. Question. What were you next shown? Answer. The letter G question. To what does it allude? Answer. Geometry, the fifth science but more particularly to the sacred name of the deity, to whom we should all, from the youngest tempted apprentice who stands in the northeast corner, to the worshipful master who presides in the east, with reverence most devoutly and humbly bow. This is the end of the fellow craft degree, or second degree in masonry. Join us next week as we begin the master mason or third degree of Freemasonry.